letters and snow through video link uh, and yet some had the courage to respond to questions also by video link and this was this was a, an achievement but it was an achievement which proved the difficulties inherent in promoting what all the eight sessions that uh, uh, Masuma and the team had planned uh, were designed to, to achieve. And then as we looked at the conference, I'm sorry, I'm going to be a little uh, less uh, uh, optimistic. You know, I, I thought that uh, uh, one of the things that the last session uh, did was uh, this survey of uh, the international situation, the survey of uh, what was going on in our region, and uh, Ambassador Koka with uh, his fantastic background in terms of United States, China, Foreign Secretary, he was ideally placed to do this uh, survey and uh, along with uh, uh, other uh, panelists, they did a masterful job. But what emerged to me and my mind from this also was a certain sense of pessimism. Worried, concerned, uh, relations with Bangladesh are not good, relations with Afghanistan are not good, relations with Iran are not good or may, may improve. Uh, it was the sort of thing which you don't really want to hear about your country. That you are not in a position to advance your interests or the interests of the region in uh, terms of discussions with your immediate neighbors. So I, I thought that perhaps we should take a look at what stuck out in the course of this discussion. And to me, two things uh, seem to emerge. Mushayat Sahib had talked about, and uh, it was just mentioned again, that the guy that talked about Pakistan being the pivot around which the, uh, the world would revolve. We have all been part, I mean, our governments have all been part to uh, attending conferences on Afghanistan, which we term the heart of Asia. So between the pivot, and the heart of Asia, it would seem to me that there is only one, one conclusion, connectivity. That connectivity has to come, but that connectivity cannot be restricted to uh, Orunji, uh, Gwadar. The countries of the region must become part of this. Now I know that uh, there are reservations on this, uh, but there are also people who have said that the only way, only way Pakistan is going to take advantage of its geoeconomic situation is if their trucks from India go to Iran, trucks from India go via Pakistan and Afghanistan to Central Asia. If we are, if we are the bridge, as we have constantly maintained, then that bridge can only function if there are surfaces of both sides that need to be connected. So I think uh, uh, connectivity is going to be the answer. I, uh, I think uh, Riaz was there when, uh, in 1991, uh, 92, he expanded the economic cooperation organization and uh, included the Central Asian states. We had a conference in, uh, uh, in Quetta. We uh, drafted a Quetta plan of action which was supposed to bring them together. And each one of the circulation states said to us, uh, please, you are our connection to the outside world. We have apprehensions of our other neighbor. Uh, we don't want to continue the Russian connection. And we have apprehensions about our other neighbor because they are old apparatchiks or uh, non kulturas from uh, an earlier era. And they did not think that at that time uh, Iran had given up on the export of the revolution. So they wanted us. A deputy minister said to me in, in, uh, in uh, Quetta, but also when I became foreign secretary and went with uh, Motarama Bianzi Bhutto to uh, Uzbekistan, uh, Karim also said exactly the same thing. And then the deputy minister said, I know every culvert, every road in Afghanistan. I know exactly what needs to be done to make our road to Karachi. There was no other uh, at that particular point. <coughs> in 
in the Marriott Hotel, you could not find a place in 92 because all the gas and oil companies were in uh, the Marriott saying this is the logical route by which we will travel. I uh, would like us to think that the two things that emerged here was that terrorism is a theme, governance is a theme. And governance, to my mind, is the more, even at this point, to me, governance is the more important. Because solve governance and you come much closer to solving terrorism. You have a problem. It is an internal problem. But I think we should acknowledge that this, that problem is genuinely governance. In every, every uh, presentation that was made, in one way or the other, this came up. Whether we talked about the fact that governments have failed to provide, governments have failed to depoliticize the police, governments have failed in uh, raising taxes, and so on down the road, all of it points to the fact that our problems, perhaps there is an add-on external, but our problems are internal. And what I wanted to suggest to uh, uh, Dr. Masuma was really that perhaps we need a conference which focuses entirely on what needs to be done or what the intellects, uh, you know, Karachi is, uh, and frankly, let me add that I was very impressed with the quality of the questions that were asked. It seemed to belie the reputation that Karachi has of being only the, lip, the financial and business capital. There is a reservoir of intellectual capacity here and that was clearly evident, uh, partly a result of uh, uh, Dr. Masuma's careful selection of the people that she invited, but also that there is this reservoir of, of uh, talent available and uh, which uh, has not been tapped as often as it should have been. So I think uh, we should, perhaps, uh, we were talk, told about the fact that there are four types of militants. There are, uh, there are many of these problems. You eliminate even the problem of the debate that we heard about FCR to be retained, FCR not to be retained, FATA, FATA to be merged, not to be merged. These are old problems that arise because we have no sense of governance. Riaz made a remark that uh, we really don't know what is going on in, uh, in Islamabad today, whether there is any thinking going on at all. And some, at some stage, we have to start thinking again. Give foreign policy a rest, focus on the internal, forget about your phobias, about who hates you and who's going to clobber you. Forget about that. Focus on fixing what needs to be fixed internally. I know I'm sorry I'm ending this on a rather, rather somber note, but also on an optimistic note. A, Karachi has proved that it has the talent, the intellectual capital uh, to make a very worthwhile contribution to discussions of this nature. B, that there are good things happening, but those good things are not going to be uh, raised to the level that they need to be unless we can have another Zarbe, uh, us, we can have a rather facade, but until we fix the problems that lie at the root of this and learn how uh, an alternative narrative, narrative is to be created, I am not sure that you really need an enormous effort. If you put governance in place, that effort will also be one that is more easily handled. So let me once again say thank you for uh, to Dr. Masumo for having invited me and for having surprised me with the fact that I was going to make the concluding remarks. But that's fine. I think there were at least six others who suffered with the same things. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you again. Well, it is my turn to thank everybody and to say goodbye. First of all, I want to thank the sponsors who made a contribution, financial and otherwise, which made this conference <coughs> possible. I also want to, since it is difficult for me to know how to proceed now, I will proceed chronologically and say that when I first thought of, conceived the idea of holding this conference, I got a lot of 
support from Ambassador Edwin Bin Sheikh, from Ambassador Shafat Katakhil, and from Ambassador Elisa Ranafi, all to whom my thanks. To my council members who helped to raise funds and also helped in many numerous other ways in getting this conference going. Uh, to the event uh, managers, Lukaya's team, our team, and to the passage, who are our media managers. I am extremely grateful to all the chairs of the sessions and to all the speakers. They were excellent sessions, far beyond my expectation. Extremely grateful that you all came here and that you provided so much wisdom and so much knowledge under this one roof. I also want to thank uh, my team at the Institute who worked in very difficult circumstances. We were, had to put up with a lot from many quarters, uh, but they worked <coughs> in coordination with one another and they worked together. There were many, many demands on us, but my team members managed to handle them. I want to mention them. Amir Shahzad, who helped me to coordinate the conference. <coughs> Amir Rifat, uh, who had to deal with all the security concerns and they were very difficult to deal with. Fafudin Daoud, Yaman Raza, Khurnam Khalid. And to my three brilliant young researchers who have looked after you, uh, Maso Hichki, Vajiha Najam, and Aisha Duhan. And uh, above all, to my printer, Rashid, who put up with a lot uh, and did a lot of work in a very short space of time. Uh, you won't believe it, but we had to get our cards, invitation cards, printed three times. The first time, <clears throat> because in the first card we mentioned the name of the president and that was discarded. Apparently, we were not supposed to do that. The second time, because the president said initially he would come at 10 o'clock, but then he, for some reason, could get, come at 10. He came at 11, so we had to discard that card. And so we had to go in for a third printing. But Rashid was very, 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 very patient, and he turned out a lot of well printed stuff. So for all of you, my best wishes. Thank you for making this uh, such a great event for the Institute. And uh, I hope that in the future we can have another conference. Maybe Peace in South Asia revisited. And uh, perhaps there will be younger voices. I think we should hear young people. Uh, I was very impressed by David Mittal's presentation. Uh, maybe we can have a conference in which there will be young people because I'm sure that their views will be a little different from ours. So for those of you who are traveling out of Karachi, I hope you have a safe journey and do keep uh, your contacts with the Institute and for those who are staying here in Karachi, all the best, always. Uh, flowing into Pakistan and occupying, you know, there's a lot of, lot of articles I'm referring to it because a lot of articles have been written about this aspect and particularly about East India Company. Uh, uh, one more question from this side, please. Hello? No question. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We've had a very interesting discussion. Uh, lots of very interesting pertinent points have been raised, some are very controversial, but uh, they are important, but at the, you know, we don't have enough time. I, I was hoping that we'd have more you know, uh, session. Uh, but let, let me say that uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Masuma Hassan for uh, this uh, excellent conference. And uh, I want to thank each of the speakers for, except myself, I did not make any pertinent point, but I think they all made excellent uh, uh, contribution uh, to enrich uh, the session. And uh, thank you very much for your questions also. Thank you. This
conference. Uh, I had asked two colleagues on the council of the institute, Professor Tanveer Khalid and Professor Uzma Shudar, to just draw up a small uh, list of conclusions, after which uh, Mr. Matuti Sheikh will uh, give his concluding remarks and I will say goodbye. The subject is of such great importance, uh, that is peace in South Asia, but associated with that is the uh, challenges and the opportunities, and we have had a very extensive discussion for two days. Uh, so I'm going to just summarize session-wise. Uh, all important speakers gave us very absorbing information, which was correct, which was very absorbing, which was remarkable in all sense. And it was their experience, personal and otherwise, their research and objectivity that they presented. So I would first like to mention the keynote address, the points on what Mr. Senator Mishai Hussain expressed. He, according to him, uh, it was nothing, uh, a new idea was not there. The way forward for Pakistan is the vision of the time that was which he expressed in his interview with a foreign uh, journalist for the first time after partition and that was according to him that Pakistan will remain a pivot around which world affairs will revolve. So this is where we find ourselves. Think tanks, the PWIA as a think tank is trying to consider and project this very objective because think tanks are a pivot which present or help in the formulation of public policy. So things have been changing in our region at an international level as well and we find that the dynamics of change is going on and it is so magnanimous that is the rift between Iran and the United States, permanent military presence in the Gulf, events like the 9-11, China under Deng Xiaoping, showing great resilience and Pakistan successfully combating terrorism. So peace in South Asia is most important and efforts will can begin according to Mr. Mashani Hussain by back channel dialogues through trusted and tributes, avoiding adopting a partial extremist approach evident in the present attitude of the two nuclear neighbors and steps which can be taken in the right direction. Yes. In, the in the second and third sessions regarding trade and connectivity, it was emphasized that commonalities in our area should be better identified so that instead of waiting for a time for a composite dialogue, these commonalities can help and which should be mostly in trade by trade liberalization, reducing trade restrictions and businessmen can play an important role. Regarding informal diplomacy and the solution of social issues, uh, we, uh, it was expressed that more rapid modernization and ethos of liberalization and emergence of the middle class can help in solution of our problems. And it was also suggested that women should be brought to the forefront in the fields of foreign policy as well as governance because they should be the centrality of various efforts in South Asia because they have been the more sufferers. Regarding nuclear security, uh, it was expressed that uh, we should go by the standards, uh, accepted standards of uh, interna at the international level. So we should must abide by the recognition of a comprehensive scope to be considered at the state level. We should be committed to international standards by providing our framework and confidence building measures must be adopted between parties so that we can share opportunities and solve our problems. Only a coordinated effort can help and this can be done by a quadrilateral uh, agreement or an effort on the parts of not only two countries, that's India and Pakistan, but on the part of other major players, that's including the United States and China. 
regarding terrorism, it was an accepted fact that uh, Pakistan has tried its best and it should not be forced to do more. The only thing we can do now is promote moderation, toleration and coexistence which is the solution and the people must work with the government to contain extremism and terrorism. Last of all, informal diplomacy can also play an important role and as a conclusion, uh, we can say that from all the sessions and all the opinion of scholars, it was that it is required that the government has not been paying due focus to issues, whether those are peace, water, trade connectivity, solution of social issues, either because of deliberate negligence, incapacity, unwillingness or ignorance to the magnanimity of the issues, which can be termed as lack of political will and governance. Thank you. I've requested uh, Ambassador Nagrudi Sheik to give the concluding remarks. As you know, he is the big guru of all diplomats. He was, he was my boss. He was my boss. He was foreign secretary when I was ambassador in Vienna. And I learned a great deal from him. From him. And we have always looked up to him. He's been a great uh, supporter of all our efforts in the Institute. That would be something. Thank you so much, Rasuma. I think uh, this is uh, an ideal moment. Everybody is so exhausted that nobody wants to ask a question. <laughs> Everybody wants me to finish as quickly as possible so that they can head home, have a cup of tea and head home. But unfortunately, I also tend to be somewhat prolix in my remarks, so I'm not going to hold back. Let me, let me just start by saying to, to uh, Masuma that I was so very happy to hear the remarks with regard to the 70th anniversary, uh, uh, an institution that came into being along with Pakistan in, in one sense. And the number of names that she listed of the people who were involved in the original setting up of the institution, its construction, and then I learned from people here that uh, most people of a particular age uh, and from a particular university thought that this was the library to consult uh, if they were going to go on and uh, offer the civil service examinations. That one I didn't know. I didn't benefit from it, but I was in the age group where I could have benefited from it, but I did my graduation from Hyderabad and therefore I did not. But I think it was a very good thing to, it, it, in a sense, resumed uh, or allowed you to remember once again what the founding of Pakistan was like and what, what the struggles that were uh, imposed upon the people at that time and how courageously they responded. This was, this was one of the things that I thought was uh, worth pointing out. I thought also that uh, uh, the...